Hello, America. I am. T- <laughs> you are. I don't know what I am. I'm listening. <laughs> Fuck, I'm starting this again. No, I hear no, you. No, keep, oh, keep no, going. just keep going. All right. Hello, America. <laughs> You're listening to the DMZ America podcast for Thursday, May 11th, 2023. Coming to you from the left. I am editorial cartoonist Ted Rawl. And I'm editorial cartoonist Scott Stannis coming to you from the right. I just love that. You had to do like an old timey thing too. Hello, mother, mom and dad and all the ships at sea. I'm Ted Rawl coming to you live via the telephonics. Indeed. Indeed. Anyway. So here we are. Another slow news week, Scott. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Always. always. Um, So let's talk about Donald Trump. Um, he made uh, he he kind of had a return uh, to the campaign trail in a serious way, although obviously he never really went away. But he returned to CNN for the first time since 2016. He never once granted a CNN interview or or answered a CNN question uh, as president ever. So uh, he came back. He had a friendly crowd, obviously negotiated. Uh, for the event um, with uh, new CNN boss Eric Licht up in New Hampshire. It seemed to be a very Trump-friendly Republican crowd up there. Uh, Even the choice of the uh, questioner, the host, 31 years old, uh, she used to work at the Daily Caller, which is, of course, Tucker Carlson's uh, news website. So it indicates to me that she, uh, that, you know, that Mm. basically she, she had conservative credentials, which is maybe why she didn't push back very hard against many of the things that Trump said, Uh, you know, we should go over them and sort of um, talk a little bit about what he said. I mean, mainly in no particular order, because I don't remember the order, but basically he said that he doesn't really, in terms of Ukraine, he refused to be pinned down on whether he wanted to continue to support Ukraine financially or not. Uh, He also said that uh, he didn't care whether Ukraine or Russia won, but he promised that he could end the war in 24 hours uh, if given the chance, if he were president. (laughs) Uh He also, um, what else did he do? I'm trying to remember some of the lowlights. He he tap danced around the abortion question. Mm -hmm. Um, He said that he would come up with a beautiful deal that everyone would love, just perfect for America. Which is great because yeah. that's the country we, li- we live in. So uh, currently th- that is the <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so that was of interest. It was notable. I thought uh, he also um, said that he would pardon most, if not all of the January 6th uh, people who've gone to prison most recently. Uh, the Dis- Department of Justice just indicated that it's going to ask for 25 years in prison for the head of the Oath Keepers uh, right wing group. So that's kind of like crazy. He also uh, he also said that uh, Putin shouldn't be called a criminal because that just makes it harder to cut a deal. And he said that he would not promise to acknowledge the results of the 2024 election unless he deems it to be an honest election. In other words, unless he wins. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. So he also, yeah, the January 6th stuff, he also said was a beautiful, it was a beautiful gathering that was peaceful. I'm going. He also made fun of Gene Carroll, who uh, this week, earlier this week, won a $5 million uh, damage award um, against him, finding him liable for rape and defamation uh, in New York, uh, in federal court. Uh, she's obviously celebrating that he made fun of her and assumed like a girly voice uh, to try to pretend like he was her. Um, So, yeah, I mean, basically it was a classic Trumpian performance uh, marking, of course, unsurprisingly, no change in this man that so many love and many others just know or loathe. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. And loathe. Uh, So the question is, you know, I mean, look, he's riding high in the polls, despite everything, despite the the uh, indictment by the Manhattan D.A., despite the uh, the 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 rape verdict. Um, You know, I don't see any sign of that changing. I don't think his position in the race is imperiled. Uh, I mean, you know, but it is interesting because we are 
basically seeing that he's not planning any kind of ideological pivots going into this election. He's going to just do what he always do, does yeah. Uh, ideologically. Yeah. And, and temperamentally, um, tonally, I mean, it's, it's, I, I mentioned it on your show earlier today. It's Trump 3.0 It this, but, but it's sort of like when you remember windows, you know, would <laughs> upgrade and it would be absolutely no discernible difference except it's for, like the new you know, iphones oh the camera is a little better yeah precisely precisely and that's what this is this is not an improvement a change uh it's not a more introspective donald trump you know you're what you're never yeah. going to get it no. wasn't a more empathetic trump which again you're never going to get no um this was donald trump and so that's why i think things like the indictment in manhattan the um the decision, the uh, jury decision against him in the sexual assault case, none of that makes a difference because everybody knows who and what this guy is. You know, it's not, you know, this isn't, oh, we're just now learning what Donald Trump is all about. We know what he's all about. We, we've we've had him as our president. We've had him as a candidate. We've had him as an ex-candidate. We've had him as a guy who, you know, riles up uh, uh, riots. You know, we know what he is. So the, the, this appearance... Do you have to take? Do you have to take that? No, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> that was just the NSA. They'll call back. Okay, great, great. I actually did that during a speech one time. Someone's phone went off after I was like, I'm really adamant when I start a speech. I say, just please look at your phones and turn them on silent. And um, one one phone went off, and I actually took it out of the person's hand and brought it. Up. <laughs> you did? Do you still have it? No, I did give it back, but I put the, I answered it and put the, uh, put it on speaker and put it nice. next to the mic. And so, um, anyway, yeah, that, 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 that person didn't ask me to come back. Um, I, I don't know. So there's no takeaway other than, you know, it's the same old bullshit. It's the same old Donald fucking Trump. That's that, that's the takeaway. There's no change. Well, so Scott, we're going into uh, this election season. I think we could say it's officially uh, pre-started at least. Oh, um, yeah. And it looks like, uh, you know, it's going to be a rematch. It's going to be Biden versus Trump again. So now what? I mean, what I mean, what's the lay of the land here? I mean, uh, you know, is are, are the American I mean, how is this going to let's just say that this plays out the way we think. Um, the Democratic field is starting to coalesce. Uh, it looks like on the Democratic side, um, 30% of Democratic voters no longer do not belong to this president. Uh, they belong to yeah. Marianne Williamson or Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And no campaigning has begun. No ads have been aired. Nothing has happened Um to me, what that signals is even if Biden coasts to the nomination, which I think is frankly far from certain. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, I mean, and and conventional wisdom says, well, you know, what this points to, like a Gavin Newsom is like, what if someone serious with even better hair than RFK were to get into the race? <laughs> um, but to me, actually, I think the bigger danger to Biden is if is if that doesn't happen. And uh, anti-Biden votes coalesce around, say, RFK Jr. or Marianne Williamson. But one of those two, you know, I think given the history of misogyny and sexism in the United States, we could say most likely RFK, um, not to mention the name recognition. So, I mean, I mean, this to me, let's just say Biden survives the general. I think he enters the, I mean, he, he survives the primaries. He enters the general really weakened right i mean very weak um not yeah, from the contest just from the fact that like obviously a lot of democratic voters did not sign up for two terms for him and so yeah yeah so so i see him you know with a huge enthusiasm problem which oh. could translate to low turnout yes yeah i think he is clearly working the african-american community particularly african-american women those were those uh, numbers were huge for him in 2020. Uh, but in terms of coming out, it, it, it's not weird. You think about this, that he's going to have what potentially an uncontested 
run to the nomination. And the DNC, as you know, is doing everything it possibly can to make it uncontested. Right. Uh, they're not going to have debates, which is ludicrous given that just those two candidates, Marianne Williamson, as you mentioned, and RFK Jr., are polling at 30 percent collectively. That tells you that you have to have a debate. And the the, the, the Biden people do not want this. Uh, they will not. The Republicans have said we're not going to have debates. So even if there were like you could have Trump on the stage with DeSantis, I don't think it's a fear by Donald Trump. He eat those guys alive. Um, yeah. You know, let's face it. Nikki Haley, why much she's going to stand no, up? I think I think if and, I were I'm not so sure Trump won't agree to some primary debates because it will. I mean, it'll be good for him. He comes out of those strong. Um, yeah. he, he he does a good job. Uh, I, I think if I were him, I'd do it. It's, it's I mean, he's a very unconventional candidate in that respect. Normally, when you're that far ahead, he's fif running 54 percent to DeSantis is 22 percent. Last time I checked. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, DeSantis is sinking like a rock. That's an interesting story in and of itself. It is. I mean, and although it's I'm getting a lot of, um, you know, we're getting a lot of mixed signals about DeSantis, whether he's going to pull the trigger or not, right? He's not going to run. I'm I don't think he's going to run now. either, but there's some noise that, you know, he he's he's trying, he wants to run and he'll announce like in the next week or two. Really? I hadn't heard that. Um, but, it's, but it's mixed. I think he'd be an idiot to run. Uh, you're not going to, yeah. clearly the party is in the, can, remains in the pocket of Donald Trump. So why hurt your brand? Why lose? You know, That's right. Um, yeah, he should. He really shouldn't. I think he should keep his powder dry. If I were his friend, which, you know, since he is a Guantanamo torturer, I suppose it's better to be friends with him than to not be friends with him. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't <laughs> No, no rectal feeding, please, Ron, please. No, <laughs> don't be the don't let the bad jag come out. Um, so, so, yeah. But I mean, I would say I would tell him, yeah, keep your powder dry. Wait till 2028. Uh, Nikki Haley obviously is running for vice president. If tr if uh, Trump wins and has her as Veep and he dies in office, which seems, I think, at least uh, I was going to say probable, but 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 like, you know, certainly highly possible. Um, yes. Then uh, DeSantis, uh, you know, then then Haley comes out of it. Does she come out of it as a strong Veep, I, I don't know, but I don't, I doubt it. And if I'm DeSantis, I'm, I'm like, gonna, I'm willing to play that card and see what happens. Um, you know, on the, so, I mean, re, Trump comes out of the primaries next, next summer, strong. Biden comes out, assuming he's still alive, weak. Um, you know, advantage Trump, right? Am I missing something? No, I don't think you're missing. I mean, the polls certainly agree with you today. I was, I just had an argument with a democratic friend of mine about how that's that, <laughs> you know, that's not true. Those polls aren't, you know, that, no, it's not true. And it's like, everybody is in this mode now where if something, someone says something that you don't agree with, it can't be true. We're going to party so like it's 2016 at Hillary's God. victory party. <laughs> well, we learned so much from president Hillary's uh, first four years in office. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Yeah. No, this is, and you know, we've, we've touched on this in other podcasts, but I it bears repeating and, and discussing it further is the fact that the Biden campaign seems to think it can run the same kind of campaign it did in 2020. And that is cloister the, the candidate, he never makes any appearances uh, or very, very few. They're very scripted. Uh, there's no press conferences as there haven't been. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, if he comes out of the primary and JFK Jr. and uh, Marianne Williamson are pulling the kind of, still continue to pull these numbers or more, mm. it's going to be an embarrassment. And the fact that he won't debate them makes him look even worse. Um I think he's I think he's in a weak position, even as an incumbent who is actually sitting on a, you know, as you've mentioned before, he kept us out of recession. He kept it us kept us out of depression. The economy's doing okay. We're at relative peace, unless you mention, you know, throwing you know, a fistful of tanks to Ukraine. But for the but we're we're at peace. Uh it's a it's a good record. And he's he, but he can't run on it because he doesn't he's too old to run. He on just it. can't run. Yeah. Um well, that's yeah, exactly. He can't do the job. Right. I mean, that's the problem, um, you know, and 
it's it's funny because of course we had that poll last week blink and you'll miss it but only 34 percent of americans voters which means obviously including a lot of democrats believe that he has the mental acuity necessary to be the president of the united states um yeah. That's look, I, I, I you can put me in with the 66 percent who do not believe he has that mental acuity. Um, he's uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing is, I mean, there's only I mean, I think that's his biggest enemy, um, not Donald Trump. The perception that he was a transitional president, that he knew he was really old even when he started. Uh, now he's obviously that much older. And it's 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 you know, he, he looks the worst for the wear. Um the only way he could rescue, I think, his presidential reelection campaign would be to somehow drive a stake through the perception that he's old. And the only way he could do that is be, you know, he'd have to basically be seen like running marathons and 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 climbing Yosemite and like, you know, basically doing all sorts of like physically active things and taking on the press like in unscripted yeah. ways yeah. every single day. <laughs> Uh, visiting, doing some town halls. You know, I was thinking about that town hall that we were talking about that Trump did in New Hampshire. If, I mean, I wonder if the Democrats will request equal time because they might not want it, right? I don't know that Biden would what want it. Well, I'm not sure Biden would want to appear in a town hall uh, where he has to think on his feet and answer questions from civilians uh, and not have a cheat sheet with the questions already written out for him. I'm not yeah, sure he can do that. Well, but Trump virtually had that, as you mentioned at the top of the show, of the podcast, that he came, the woman doing the questioning came from a Tucker Carlson, Carlson um, you know, entity. The audience was not vetted. You know, most of these things, they vet them to have a third supporters, a third mm -hmm. Democrat, and a third independent. They didn't have that. But with Biden, if you had, I mean, why wouldn't you? Jesus, you could say, yeah, I want to be questioned by my press secretary in front of my family members. I mean, <laughs> who, would, who wouldn't want that? You well, know? I'm I not mean, sure that Biden could even do that. I mean, first of all, I wouldn't call her uh, like the equivalent of a PR flack for the Republicans. I mean, she is a reporter, um, you know, even if she's very wet behind the ears. Um, she's, you know, Gen Z, I guess she might be millennial. Uh, well, uh, yeah, and, young they did, millennial. And, and she did try to challenge Trump on, on a number of, of a, a number of uh, occasions during the course of that town hall. Trump just sort of, you know, no one ever like, challenges Biden. I haven't seen anyone hold Biden's feet to the fire when he tries to weasel out of a question. Not once. No, because that's, you know, that we've talked about that a million times. It flies against the narrative. The mainstream media is not going to go after him in any meaningful way. Um, the story now coming out about, well, we're going to talk about Joe Biden in another Yeah, segment. well, maybe we so, should like uh, take a break and then. Yeah, let's do that. And then talk about that. All right. Well, cool. We'll be right back. Keep it right here.